What we're looking at here is the uh, electrodynamic ion traps experiment from Newtonian Labs. And we're taking a bit of a bird's eye view here. We have the, the main chassis with all the controls for the voltage and the strobe for the laser and various things of that nature. Uh, we have one of the uh, trap boxes here. Uh, this has the ring trap inside. Here's another one, another similar trap box. Uh, we have three of these that come with the instrument and uh, they have banana plugs on the bottom and they plug into the main chassis so we can drive each of the three uh, uh, traps from the chassis here. Uh, and then uh, we have a camera in the back. Uh, the camera's here and we have macro lens looking inside. Right now it's looking at this ring. There's a ring in the center of this box. Uh, that ring has an inner diameter of about 16 millimeters. Okay, so it'll fit over your little finger, little, uh, finger without too much trouble. And uh, we can also look directly in the front of the box and see the ring. Uh, you can see my hand on the monitor there. Uh, that's because I can look right in here. Uh, you see my finger and I can look right at the trap uh, from the front. And that's really nice for when you're uh, uh, making these things, you can see uh, what's going on with your naked eye. Okay, so let's turn on our, our laser here a little brighter. Okay, so what we have here is a green laser. Uh, basically a laser pointer and it projects a uh, beam into this prism and then down into the into the trap box and uh, most of the light goes right through the center of that ring okay and that gives everything this green green glow okay uh, and the reason for the laser is just it's really really bright and it's bright enough so we can see the particles very easily so uh, let's go ahead and put some particles in the trap and you'll see what I mean so now I just turn up the voltage to 3 kilovolts, and so now there's 3,000 volts uh, AC, 60 hertz, on that ring. Okay, and it's uh, waiting for some particles, so I'll start with what we have here is uh, what we call a wand. It's made of Teflon, and we're going to rub that with uh, cloth, like so. Just a couple of swipes will do. And what that does is it charges the wand up. Okay, uh, Teflon is very far on the triboelectric chart and it, uh, uh, it, it gets very negatively charged very easily. So now we have a beaker uh, with some particles in here. Those are Lycopodium club moss spores. Uh, they're basically just large uh, plant particles uh, like pollen, only not, not quite as, as bad as most pollens. Uh, they're very nice. They're, they're actually about 25 microns in diameter. Uh, they're fairly, uh, a fairly constant diameter and um, they're very cheap, uh, they're spherical, fairly spherical as well, uh, and all about uh, the same size makes them very nice. So we uh, just pick some of those up with our charged wand, and we take it over here, and we just drop them into the trap, like so. And there we see on the monitor uh, some particles trapped inside uh, uh, the ring, okay? And uh, very easy to do, very, very easy. You just uh, turn it on, the particles just jump right in, and uh, uh, so now, uh, you can't see them so well from this view, so what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the video feed from this camera. So this camera is going, and we're going to switch to that and have a look at that trap up close, okay? Uh, and we'll do that now. Okay, here we are looking at the monitor directly. That is, this is the video feed from that camera that was in the back of the chassis. And there you see the, um, the particles. Okay, and the green laser light. Okay. Now, uh, you may wonder why the particles look like little streaks. And uh, we'll show you that in a second here. Let me reduce the number of particles. We'll just turn the trap down and get rid of some of those particles so we have fewer to look at. Okay, move them up a little bit. Now, so there we have a collection of particles, a couple of dozen particles. And uh, you can see that they look a little bit like streaks. Okay. And the reason is, is because of the uh, 60 hertz electric fields inside the trap. Okay. So that's what's uh, uh, keeping those particles trapped. You see them kind of moving around a little bit. That's just air currents. Uh, the trap is kind of open. And uh, we could put uh, covers on it, but right now it's open. And so uh, the air currents will push it around. That's just from me talking. And... Uh, and the particles look like little streaks. So what we can do to see that directly is we will strobe the laser light. Okay, we'll turn a strobe on here. 
And now, if we get the frequency right, this is all just provided inside the chassis. Now we can see the micro motion. So we're strobing the laser. There's 60 hertz electric fields. And now we're strobing the laser at uh, 59 hertz or something like that. So they're going back and forth. It kind of uh, slows down the motion. If we were to strobe right at 60 hertz, we can really just stop the motion. Okay. So there it is, almost stopped. It's hard to see then, so we like to give it a little bit. So now it's just a, a bit away from 60 hertz. And that shows you what, what we call the micro motion. That's the 60 hertz oscillations of the particles. And uh, there's a quadrupole type field, electric field, inside that ring. The field goes to zero at the center of the ring. And it increases in all directions outward. And so uh, as that field increases and decreases, it pushes all the particles in and out toward the trap center. Okay, because the, the fields all point toward the trap center. Okay, and that's why they're oscillating back and forth in synchrony. Uh, they're all moving more or less independently uh, except that uh, the fields point to the center and so, so there's, there's their motion. Uh, now the trapping forces will push those particles toward the center of that ring. Uh, the air currents uh, push them around a little bit, uh, but mostly uh, what's keeping them in this pattern is that uh, they all have like charges, and those like charges repel one another, okay, and so that keeps them from going to the center of the trap. All right, so they're each uh, repelling all the others, and, uh, and, and so they can't get too close to one another because of that repulsion. And so that makes what's called a Coulomb crystal. Okay, you see they're all independent, they're all uh, uh, separate from one another. Uh, air, so a lot of forces going on at once. You've got gravity pulling them down, uh, and you've got a, there are static electric fields in here pushing them up, and there are the trapping forces which, which oscillate them at 60 hertz, and the, those trapping forces produce secular forces uh, that push them toward the center of the trap. And, uh, uh, and, and then there's their mutual repulsion, which keeps them separated. And so, uh, so there's quite a lot going around, uh, going on at the same time. Now I can turn the ring, okay, and I can look at them from the side. There's just a handle on the side of the ring here. And so I can just push them around, okay. Maybe it's a little easier to see if I turn the strobe off, okay. So now we have them just sitting in the trap air currents pushing them around once in a while. Uh, we can apply static DC fields, okay, in addition to the the ring is, is being charged with a AC, 60 hertz uh, high voltage, but we can put a, a thousand volts on a, another uh, DC uh, from the top and the bottom. And so now I can push the particles up or I can kind of let them fall down. So there's the DC is off. And with the DC off, uh, gravity pulls them and they sag a little bit. They're a little below center. And then, uh, and then as I turn up the DC, uh, I pull them uh, toward the top of the trap, or push them actually. Okay. Another thing I can do is I can just change the trapping fields, the AC fields. If I make them very weak, then their trap gets big. If I make them small, the trap gets small. Okay. See that again from over here. So when the trap is strong, the particles are tightly bound and they're close to the center. And if I make the trap weak, then uh, the particles are more weakly bound and they repel one another. And they actually go into kind of a spherical shell as they try to repel one another. And so you can see there's a bit of a shell-like structure there. Okay. Uh, it's very pretty clear, actually, that there, there's some on the top and some on the bottom here. Okay, and the air current's pushing them around all at the same time. If I pull them, turn the AC fields up again, then they uh, will all get uh, pushed toward the center. Some of them go into what are called extended orbits. Uh, you see that one in the middle getting a little crazy. Uh, that's explained in some of our documentations. It's a, it's a bit of an instability in the trap, which is interesting in its own, in its own right. But uh, the main thing we're trying to uh, uh, sort of do with this experiment is uh, teach people about the, uh, the physics of the trapping itself and why those particles are confined by that ring. Okay, so uh, again, take a little look at the strobe. There they are, very nice. Okay, you can sort of strobe them at different rates. Okay. 
So let's put it back here. Now we can put a lot more particles in this trap as well, so let's do that. We'll turn this up a little bit. Now uh, we will just put some more in here and we just sprinkle them in with this wand and we get lots of particles because they love to be in that trap. Uh, the wand gets them charged and then they just uh, go right in there. Okay, so that's a big cloud of trap particles. If we turn the DC field up, we can push them up to the top. If we turn the DC field down, then they will fall down and some of them will, will disappear. Okay, we can uh, rotate the ring and see them from the side. Now, let's try strobing the laser again. So boom, there's a lot of action now. So it's a little like fireworks. You can sort of play around with gel by yourself here. So a bit of a fireworks display of trapped ions. So each one of those streaks, each one of those particles is about 25 microns in diameter. They're lycopodium club moss particles. There they all are sloshing back and forth. Take a look at that. Kind of traces out the electric field a bit. Shows you what's going on. Let's go a little faster. So you can get, get the picture. Now I find this just a really satisfying look because because uh, you're really just seeing those electric fields uh, inside the ring kind of directly by the particle paths, the tracks of the particles, and you can really just see them sloshing around. Turn to here, they're going in and out. Here they're sloshing up and down. And uh, what's fun about this too, and, and you can't see this, you know, you're just looking at, you're seeing what the camera sees, but if you were sitting here in, in person, you can actually stick your head down here and put your nose down, and you can see this all by yourself, just your naked eye. And I tell you, it's just very satisfying to see something like this with the naked eye because it, it takes on a certain amount of realism that you, you don't get when you just see something on a video. And uh, I find that very pleasing. So, uh, uh, and this is like a, a cakewalk. You can do this every time. The particles love to get trapped. You just turn up the voltage and uh, throw them in there. And uh, it works every time. It's easy as pie. Anybody can do it. Uh, it's great fun to watch. Okay, and there we have it. Lots of there's lots of stuff going on, and if you want to understand more, you really have to look at the documentation a little bit we have online. Uh, the physics is not trivial. I mean, it's not like ordinary mechanics where it all just makes perfect sense. Here, uh, some of the the dynamics is subtle enough to be interesting, and you really have to read about it to. Uh, uh, to understand, and that's really the purpose of the lab, is to, is to sort of show how that works. Alright, I guess that's all I have for now. Uh, thanks for listening.